Caddis Maximus here. This time we're reviewing the Smith & Wesson HRT Knife Combination Set. This was $25 where uh, I went and picked it up and thought I'd put a review out there. I kind of impulse bought these. may end up returning them for even $25. Uh, I guess it's okay for the pair, particularly because it has a larger, uh, I guess it would be a dagger style, although it is only sharpened on one side, not the other side, and that may be due to a variety of reasons, probably some of them complying with various laws of certain states in the United States. I do know that knife laws uh, do vary quite a bit from state to state, and so I had one commenter who recommended I do a little bit more research. You know, I'm kind of a consumer, and that's how I'm reviewing these knives generally. But I always like to make sure or put out there that people should uh, check before ordering stuff just because I don't want anybody to get into trouble. Now, this larger uh, dagger style does come with a genuine leather case, and it's really not so bad. It has a nice strong steel clip. We can see it's uh, double layered, and actually they're pretty intelligent. The belt clip is in its own layer, so the, the blade is not actually rubbing against the back side of the steel, the belt clip, and then it wraps around. They even include a little metal reinforcer, so when you open and close it, it doesn't, um, you know, the leather's less likely to fatigue right where the snap is. And we can see that they, they do claim that it really is leather, as it says right here, leather sheath. They do include some fiber reinforcing. I suppose that's just to make sure that this snap lasts a little bit longer. This blade is actually just under five inches from the very hilt. But, and I don't know if I'm getting my terminology right, I'm slowly learning. But from right here where it's sharpened, we can see that it's just at four and a half inches long. So this, in most states in the United States, this would be considered a concealed weapon if you had it, uh, you know, in the sheath in your pocket. However, I do know of at least one state where... The state Supreme Court's actually ruled that a four and a half inch knife is considered a tool, not a weapon, and doesn't actually fall under those same uh, concealed laws. It's really, those are some of the variations. The reason a lot of pocket knives are three inches long is that's like the universal standard across the United States for blade length on a pocket knife, but that does vary. There are states where four and a half inches is considered a tool and not a weapon. So yes, you can have blades of significant length that are just considered pocket knives. So if we take a closer look, they do advertise as these being 7CR17MOV high carbon steel. What they've done on this set is, uh, for this larger knife, this is a TPE handle, and it seems to be fairly well over molded. They did include, there's some kind of reinforcing in these two, and I'm not sure what these are called as part of the hilt where the, these wings come off, but they are pretty stiff. They're not actually real flexible so I'll give them that and the blades reasonably thick it looks like it's about 3 16 of an inch thick and then they have this little kind of uh, relief here in the center and then once again they did do most of the grinding on the back side but they did not actually give it a sharp edge one thing I'll say about the edges of any of these pocket knives I noticed is they come with an okay sharpening grind but they are not like a very fine hand grind where you've used five different stones to really get a super sharp edge. They just come with general utility or acceptably sharp edges, but anybody who's really into having a nice sharp knife will need to take a new pocket knife and sharpen it really sharp if that's what they want. These are fine, but they're not the greatest. They do have a brass insert for a uh, lanyard for your hand, and this little unit's really not so bad at all. They do have a specific part number for this, as you can see there, SWHRT9BF. And then it also came with this really kind of cheesy uh, flip or finger flip opening pocket knife. Now they do advertise as being a fiberglass reinforced nylon handle. And it has this kind of drilled area where I assume you can put a lanyard. It only has two side securing screws as well as the main screw for the blade. What was really kind of disappointing why I'm probably going to return this if we can get the camera to focus is the blade is really, really thin and pretty flexible. This whole thing is actually pretty thin. It does have a steel uh, liner and it is a liner lock. That's where a part of the steel liner actually flips over. 
It has a pretty long belt clip, which, you know, some people may like, but they tend to get bent a little easier just because there's more leverage against the belt clip rather than having slightly shorter ones. It's only held in by two screws, so it could uh, work its way loose, that's for sure. But this little thing, the texturing on the handle really just isn't very aggressive at all. It does work relatively smoothly, and it does have a thumb assist as well, so you can open it with your thumb. Or you can also use the finger flip, like so. And it does work pretty well. I do like the finger flip type knives just because they provide this extra notch right here where you can really get a, a good purchase on it. And if you're trying to, you know, stab into, or excuse me, I should say, poke into some plastic packaging, opening up packaging, uh, it helps make sure that your hand isn't going to want to slip. I do know this is called jimping up here, these uh, serrations that they put for grip. And they're not very aggressive. And then it's also recessed below the top of the knife body, which does not have any jimping on it. So it's really for looks. You can't even feel it. It's so far recessed. And so that's something I will give them also thumbs down for. This thing is really cheap. If you want to know the truth, the build quality of this would be less than $5 a Harbor Freight. And surprisingly enough, if we compare it to the Gordon Tactical Knife, which is like 7 or $8, this one's kind of stiff. I've had it for a while. This is actually a lot better than this Smith & Wesson HRT. And it's not really a Smith & Wesson. I wanted to point that out, too. It's Smith & Wesson branded from American Outdoor Brands Corporation. That is a Battenfield Technologies product. So we got like three different brands associated with this product, which is a little bit strange as well. Don't really know, you know, it's like the manufacturer or designer, the reseller, and then rebranded for Smith & Wesson. It's just kind of cheesy. Smith & Wesson's doing this kind of stuff. You know, they're not a brand like Ford or something like that. And putting their name on a couple of cheesy knives like this actually takes away from them. This is not helping expand their brand awareness. I can tell you that. This is these are just not very high quality. They should have charged fifteen or twenty dollars and given you a much better quality one of these and not even included this because this thing is really pretty darn. I mean it works generally, but it's still pretty cheesy. They do advertise as this blade having a black oxide finish, and it doesn't really look like the same kind of black oxide I would expect. Whenever I see black oxide, I think of something like this, like this black oxide industrial finish snap on wrench. That's a black oxide finish. This looks like it's painted, to tell you the truth. That does not look anything like. It may be a black oxide finish, but it certainly isn't an industrial finish like this. As we can tell, it just look, does not even have bear any similarity. There we go. Now it's focusing. Uh, to a genuine industrial finish, and I did want to point that out. This one, they're advertising is that as being painted, as being powder coated. And we can even see that the powder coating resembles an industrial finish more than the supposed industrial finish, black oxide finish, I should say, on this little pocket knife. Also, we can see that the texturing is much more aggressive on the Gordon. The jimping, there's a ton of it. You could, it definitely helps it add additional grip. They also have on the back of the knife, you can reposition the belt clip of any of four positions on this Harbor Freight knife, where you can't reposition the belt clip at all on this little Smith & Wesson. And then if we do this and look at the blade thickness, you can see that the Harbor Freight's almost twice as thick as the Smith & Wesson. So really, that's an amazingly cheap knife. Literally, this, this thing would probably be $3 at Harbor Freight if it had the Gordon name on it. So anyway, for 25 bucks, I probably would spend my knife, my money on something else as far as knives, unless you really just kind of want a simple, lightweight, little, you know, basic pocket knife and have something that you can use for camping. They did have some interesting warnings. This was actually wrapped around the handle of this long dagger, and one of the interesting aspects of it here was for cutting wood only. So you can't cut plastic, paper, don't cut any synthetic rope. I mean, sometimes the people really, the manufacturers really need to read this stuff. I do appreciate all the warnings, you know, and these should, you know, don't strike these against the other tool. Don't use hammers with them. Uh, if blades are dull or chipped, those are actually, a knife with a dull blade is much more dangerous than a sharp knife because you're battling it and then it slips and then you accidentally cut yourself with a dull blade, which is 
much worse than even cutting yourself with a sharp blade. And they do advertise the same grade of steel on the little pocket knife, the 7CR17 MOV. Anyway, I think this will conclude the last of this review. It just would have been nice to have all this blank space on this card, and I am going to end up returning these. They're just too disappointing. It was kind of an impulse buy, but they have no information. It's just a bunch of blank space there. At least could have had some degree of, of some information about those knives besides just a couple little words on the front. But then they have this, this you know, paragraph, big old paragraph, you know, blah, blah, blah. It uh, uses working tools, not weapons, and that's good advice as well. But generally speaking, for 25 bucks, I think your money's better spent elsewhere. And this is, like I said, is more of a consumer review. I am not a knife expert. The YouTube has lots of people who are extremely well presented and profoundly knowledgeable about blades. I am not one of those people and never will be. But these things kind of catch my eye, and so I like to uh, check them out and give them a closer look. The, out of this whole set, you know, this thing I probably would keep if it was like 15 bucks or something. I kind of like the compact design, and for a basic camping knife, for whittling and that kind of thing, maybe digging, uh, I kind of like something like this with a nice, you know, sheath. And the sheath I do like. It's uh, pretty thick leather. It has a pretty stiff belt clip. Fiber reinforced, you know, they did some of the, the right points here. They, you know, re extra metal reinforcing so the clasp doesn't wear out when you're opening it. The blade does sit in really nice. It holds tight, but you don't feel it rubbing too much. And it just goes right in, holds uh, really pretty darn well, just like so. So I kind of like that, but not for $25, especially when I'm not going to use this at all, just because of how cheesy it is. So... This will actually conclude the review of this Smith & Wesson HRT knife pair uh, that's sold at general department stores. And I really appreciate everybody who's subscribed, my recent subscribers, and I also really appreciate all my early subscribers and everybody in between. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the Caddis Maximus channel. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.